Have you heard of the Waldorf and the Astoria Hotels? Perhaps you have heard of it as one of the most luxurious hotels in not only New York City, but the entire world. However, this place has a very rich and unique history. In today's video, we will tell you about the original Waldorf and Astoria Hotels and what led to their utter destruction in 1929. Have you ever thought about how far can sibling rivalry lead you to? Probably not spending millions of dollars on building a rival hotel. What do you think was the reason for demolishing such big and elegant structures? Stay till the end to get answers to all these interesting questions. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, New York City was home to two very famous hotels, the Astor and the Waldorf. These were not just regular hotels, they were like castles in the city, full of fancy things and beautiful architecture. The Astor Hotel, which was built in 1905, had a special garden right up in the sky. It was a really pretty place. Not far from it, the Waldorf Hotel had been around since 1893, showing people how fancy it was. A man named Henry Janeway Hardenberg, who liked German-style buildings, was the main architect behind it. The story of these hotels is interesting. They were built because of a competition between two cousins who were insanely rich, William Waldorf Astor and John Jacob Astor IV. Each cousin wanted to build a hotel that was more impressive than the others. Hence, they put a lot of effort into making these hotels really special. But even though these hotels were amazing, they did not last forever. As time went by, they got old and started to fall apart. Eventually, they had to be taken down and destroyed. This story is all about how these once great hotels in New York City were destroyed to make way for a new structure. Back in the late 1800s on New York City's Fifth Avenue, William built the first hotel, the Waldorf Hotel. It was a huge building with a design inspired by German styles. It was created by an architect named Henry Hardenberg. Then, four years later, John, Williams's cousin, decided to build another hotel right next to it called it the Astoria Hotel, and it had its own unique style. When the Waldorf Hotel first opened, not everyone liked it. Some people thought it was just too much and didn't fit into the existing styles. But the manager, George Bolt, had a smart idea. He organized a charity concert at the hotel. And after that, people started to really like it. Actually, they loved it. The hotel began to make a lot of money. In 1897, John Jacob Astor IV opened the Astoria Hotel. It was very impressive, too. Eventually, the two hotels were combined into one big hotel called the Waldorf Astoria and it became the biggest hotel in the world at that time. They even had a luxurious walkway connecting them, which they called Peacock Alley. Building the Waldorf Hotel was a huge project that cost about $5 million back then, which would be around $138 million today, if we account for inflation. The hotel was decorated in a German Renaissance style and had 450 rooms for guests, plus special rooms for holding big events, and another 100 rooms just for the staff. The inside of the hotel was very grand, with a garden area, marble floors, and a spacious entrance. While the Astor Hotel, which also opened in 1897, was equally grand. It had 25 public rooms and 550 rooms for guests. The design of the Astor Hotel was a blend of French and Austrian styles, using materials like stone, marble, and brick. It featured a large dining room, a room decorated with Italian and French items, and even a cafe that was designed with a hunting theme. Both of these hotels were not just places to stay. They were like palaces in the middle of New York City. People who visited these hotels could enjoy luxury and fancy decorations everywhere they looked. The cousins who built these hotels really wanted to show off and make something special. And that's exactly what they did with the Astor and the Waldorf hotels. In the Grand Astor Hotel, the Pompadour's dining area was a masterpiece of architectural and design excellence. The triple-height venue was not only a feast for the eyes, but also a testament to the hotel's commitment to luxury and elegance. It had a dome-shaped roof, crafted from amber glass, sparked the space in a golden light, creating an ambiance that, in modern vocabulary, can be described as aesthetic. The Italian architectural influences were evident in every corner due to the gray and terracotta hues, providing a heavily detailed backdrop to the marble decorations. Adjacent to Pompadour was a cozy cafe. This space, finished in rich English oak, seamlessly blended with German Renaissance and Flemish decorations, creating a unique and captivating atmosphere. It was a perfect spot for guests to enjoy their cup of coffee, 
or an informal meetup surrounded by fine craftsmanship. The Astor Gallery on the first floor was another marvelous sight. It towered French windows allowing natural light to fill the room, highlighting even the minute details of the blue, gray, and gold color scheme. This gallery was a popular spot for high-profile gatherings and photo sessions. Just a few steps away was the Colonial Room, which offered a big contrast with its bold red saturation complemented by pristine white woodwork. This room added yet another distinct character to the hotel's diverse design palette, which were designed to accommodate different tastes and preferences of the guests. Moving to the second floor, there were private apartments which were crafted from Old English oak. These apartments had large drawing rooms, which were perfect for hosting private gatherings or enjoying a quiet evening at that time. There was also the inclusion of a private butler's pantry in each suite, which showed the hotel's commitment to outstanding and customized guest servicing. Out of all the unique places the hotels had to offer, the Astor's Ballroom was undoubtedly its signature site. It was styled in the Louis XIV manner. It was capable of accommodating 700 guests for banquets and 1,200 for concerts. For decades, this ballroom was the heartbeat of New York's high society. The cost of hosting and attending events here was something that only the richest of the rich could afford to do at that time. The hotel's top floor was another wonder. It had a roof garden, surrounded by glass and decorated with rattan furnishings in a palette of pale green and pink. It offered its guests a moment of relaxation away from the busy city. The roof garden also had a restaurant which provided an unparalleled dining experience. The Grand Promenade, Peacock Alley, was the main Astor's architectural magnificence. This terrace was equipped with a bandstand, fountains, and trellises, and it was more than just a walkway. It was a symbol of the hotel's essential role as a social hub for New York's elites. Despite their peak popularity, the Astor and Waldorf hotels faced challenges that eventually led to their downfall. The original Astor and Waldorf hotels, once the definition of luxury in New York City, eventually faced a decline due to various factors. Initially, these grand hotels were the center of high society, famous for their luxurious balls, philanthropic events, and hosting important guests. They even brought new ideas to the world of cocktails and hospitality. However, as the 20th century progressed, new and more modern hotels like the St. Regis started to appear, drawing away their ideal guests. The Astor and Waldorf became to be seen as old-fashioned in a city that was always looking for the newest things. The situation worsened with the Great Depression in 1929. Financial difficulties made it hard to maintain the hotel's facilities and staff. The costs to keep up their fancy architecture and interiors became too high. At the same time, the land where the hotels stood became very valuable, more so than the buildings themselves. In 1928, the original Waldorf Astoria was demolished to make way for the Empire State Building. However, the story didn't end there. In 1931, a new Waldorf Astoria opened on Park Avenue. This new location managed to bring back much of the original venues and became famous in its own style. It hosted presidents, celebrities, and dignitaries. While the Park Avenue Waldorf Astoria faced some of the same economic and social challenges as its predecessor, it remained a symbol of luxury. The Astor family's hotel empire officially ended on May 3, 1929, when they sold their remaining interests to the developers of the Empire State Building. The original buildings were gone, but the Waldorf Astoria name continued, becoming a key part of New York City's rich history. The elegance of the original hotels is still remembered, with records kept in the New York Public Library, and the Waldorf Astoria name remains a symbol of luxury. So, that's it for the video. If you found it interesting and would love to explore more such informative content, then make sure to subscribe to our channel. Help our video reach a wider audience by liking it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.